Thank you. The next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Alice McInnes. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that Police Scotland has breached the regulation of Investigatory Powers Scotland Act 2000 on multiple occasions. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. The report referred to the regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000 and breaches of the Code of Practice on Acquisition and Disclosure of Communication Data. As I explained to Parliament in my policing statement on the 3rd of September, breaches of the Code are a matter for the Interception of Communications Commissioner's Office, who have made clear that it would be wholly inappropriate for them to make public the identity of the police forces while their investigation is ongoing, and they have set out the reasons for this. In light of the ongoing IOCO investigation, it would not be appropriate for me to comment further other than to say that ministers expect all public authorities in Scotland to comply with the Code of Practice on accessing communication data. These spying allegations are significant because the reason we have these new rules is to protect the confidentiality of journalist sources and the anonymity of whistleblowers and the freedom of the press. And that's what's at stake if the rules are illegally circumvented. Has the Cabinet Secretary discussed these claims with the Chief Constable? And irrespective of whether it is confirmed that Police Scotland is one of the two forces that contravened the new rules, what steps have been put in place to ensure that they are not breached in the future? Cabinet Secretary. Of course, President Officer, it's extremely important that our press uh, are able to operate freely uh, and that they, they have appropriate protections. And uh, no individual, in my view, uh, should have their communications uh, data improperly accessed. It's important that there are robust mechanisms in place in order to ensure that happens, which is why we welcomed the code uh, when it was brought forward by the UK Government in February um, of this year and implemented in March of this year to make sure that there was judicial oversight of any decision-making relating to uh, uh, communication data, relating to uh, journalists and journalistic uh, sources. I think, though, President Officer, it's also worth keeping in mind what IOCO have had to say about this particular matter. And I quote, where they have stated publicly, it would be wholly inappropriate for us to name the two police forces whilst we are still in the process of investigating fully these matters. Our primary concerns are to ensure that our investigation process is not prejudiced and that the privacy of those individuals who may have been adversely affected is protected and that those individuals are able to seek effective remedy. Careful consideration also had to be given to the fact that criminal investigations and legal proceedings are invariably active and we are not yet in a position to consider the impact or potential wider consequences of naming. As a government, we respect IOCO's position on this matter and I think all members should recognise that. Ms McInnes. Thank you very much. Um, has the Scottish Government been given any indication of when IOCO will report back? And can the Government give me an assurance that it has no concerns about the conduct of Police Scotland's counter-corruption unit, the body at the centre of these claims? Cabinet Secretary. Well, IOCO are an independent uh, organisation who have oversight on these matters uh, relating to any public authorities in the UK uh, that have powers under the regulatory investigatory uh, powers act uh, 2000 uh, the time frames for investigating any matters that they are looking into i understand are entirely a matter for ioco uh, and i would expect them to report in due course about any police forces in the uk or any other organizations that are investigating once they have completed their investigation process graham pearson Thank you, the drip feed of information through the media is obviously causing controversy across Scotland. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary indicate, has he been in contact with IOCA authorities uh, and indicated any will on his part to see this matter concluded at the earliest? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as a member will recognise, IOCA are an independent organisation responsible for conducting any investigations into these matters. And as I've already stated, I would expect them to report in due course into the two, the two forces which they have stated that they are presently uh, investigating. And I would expect that to be conducted in the normal course of the way in which IOCO conduct their business. Neil Finlay. Uh, I'm asking here for the, uh, uh, not for a civil service answer to this question, but for the Minister's own uh, point of view. Do, do you believe that Police Scotland or any of its predecessor forces have monitored the activities of political activists, including activists in his own party and mine, trade unionists and environmental campaigners. Do you think that has happened? 
Cabinet Secretary. Well, the answer is I have no idea. Thank you. That ends topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motion number 14311 in the name of Angela Constance on building on Scotland's educational success. Can members who wish to take